So hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the second webinar of the Public Makers project. Public Makers is a two-year Erasmus Plus project about uh, open data where we deal with open data and uh, we kind of um, we are learning about open data with um, with young people. Uh, we created um, uh, an online course with four modules that's still being finalized now. And then after the young people uh, finish the online course and learn about open data, about the data visualization, about, about making a change in the, in the community by using open data, uh, we will organize a hackathon in Italy uh, where we will uh, meet uh, meet up with young people from all of the partner countries and try to develop uh, some projects that will benefit the community uh, the young people come from. So the second webinar is entitled uh, Data Visualization. So before we start, maybe I should just say a, a few words about what is data visualization and why it's good to use it. So data visualization is actually just uh, presenting inform information and data in a more attractive, attractive way to the broad, broader public. That's exactly the point why we use data visualization and data visualization softwares, because a lot of the times, especially in the context of uh, our project, uh, we are involved in an issue, for example, where we uh, research an issue, we, we are all, all in it. And after some time, we get really familiarized with, with the, all of the terminology, with all of the numbers, with everything uh, associated with the issue that we are researching. And for us and for our little team, it starts to be, become really normal to, I don't, so, I don't know, see a billion numbers. They all mean something to us. But when we want to reach out to broader public, especially by using maybe social media, it's pretty hard to reach uh, reach out to people if you just use, I don't know, Excel spreadsheets, uh, if you use long word documents and stuff like that. So it's really fun to illustrate uh, some uh, fun and interesting parts of your data to reach out to, to more people. And in a nutshell, that's what data visualization is. Uh, there are a lot of uh, surveys done on people that show that um, human brain is actually designed in a visual way, in a more visual way. Human brain is more uh, attracted to, to visual, um, to visual um, images than to text or, or uh, any other form. And actually for the project and for the means of the, um, of the course, or the online course, I actually did this small infographic, which is actually really uh, right on spot on this topic. And it's, it's about um, the data around data visualization in human brain. And we are gonna use it today as a reference for our practical uh, part of the webinar. Um, so in essence, the thing, if we underline everything that I just said, the thing that's really important here is that human brain is really um, designed to perceive uh, information better if it's uh, visualized in a more appealing way. And that's the end point. Okay, today we are gonna use Canva, uh, canva.com, which is a free uh, online uh, software for graphic design and data visualization. And it's free, but it also has a paid part, of course. So some additional um, options are av available if you're able to pay for the monthly or yearly subscription. But the, the free part is, is fine for us. So at this point, I'm just gonna try and screen, uh, share my screen. And I'm just gonna do my whole desktop. Okay. okay. Do you see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go to Google and just write canva.com. And oh, it, it opens, but I'm just, I'm, it opens in Croatian because I'm from Croatia. 
I'm just gonna turn it into English so that it's the same for everyone. Okay, and this is the home screen of the Canva uh, web app, web page and web app. But also, of course, there's a mobile app and uh, a tablet app that you can download and you can, if you use it more often, it may be more convenient for you to have it on your phone or your tablet. Uh, but if you're on, on your computer, then you always have to go to the, um, to the web page canva.com. And I'm gonna log in because I'm already signed up. I'm just gonna use Google. It's the easiest way for me. And I'm gonna use my own Google account to enter my Canva account. At this point, it's really just important to remember that if you're using some other computer that's not your own, when you log in to Canva, and at the end when you're done and you want to log out, you log out from Canva as well, of course. You just go to, the, to your thumbnail and mm -hmm. click sign out. But if you use this option to log in through Google, it's really important to remember to also go to Google or Gmail or whatever right. and log out there as well because sometimes people forget. But you only have to do this if you're using, uh, if you're not using your own computer. Okay, so for today's uh, practice, we will, let's pretend we are doing, uh, well, not maybe pretend, maybe I actually post this to the public makers uh, project pro Facebook profile. Uh, we are doing a Facebook post about why, uh, about some interesting fact, facts about data visualization. So uh, I already can see some, um, some cool uh, designs here like presentations, Instagram posts, Instagram stories and stuff like that. But I'm gonna try and find a Facebook post. And this is great because if you're using any other software, you, the first step you have to do there is start a new document and then select the size of the document, which means you have to, you have to know the dimensions of a Facebook post in advance in order not to have Facebook cut or shorten it or crop it in any way. But in Canva, it's uh, pretty simple because you just uh, search for the thing you want and everything that comes out is already in the dimensions that fit your design perfectly. And I searched for a Facebook post. And now I can either select any of the templates that are free and completely editable. So I can use any of the templates that I see here. Maybe they suit me, maybe they don't. Or if I don't have, a, I don't see anything that I like or would like to start with, there's always the first option that says create a blank Facebook post. And I'm gonna click on it. Okay, and then just, I'm gonna go through a short intro about the user interface here in Canva. We are now in the project. We opened a new project, which is a Facebook post in this instance. And I'm just, um, everything else is the same in every kind of project that you open. Just the dimensions that we, that we see here are now specifically, specifically for the new, new Facebook post. Uh, so I'm mentioning new because it's really up to date. I don't know if, you realize the Facebook changed all of their graphic dimensions like two or three months ago. And uh, mm -hmm. Canva is up to date, so you don't have to worry about that. So how does the user interface work? We have the main canvas here. Then on the left, we have the thing that's called tabs or palettes, however you want to call them. And uh, we have a bunch of different tools grouped here in the different uh, tabs. So the first one is templates. So even though I opened an empty new project, I can still choose to uh, maybe uh, select a template at this point. The second one is uploads, where I can upload my own uh, images, my own stuff that I like. For example, if I'm doing a Facebook uh, post for a project, uh, maybe it's okay to also include the logo of the project. Although I, as a graphic designer, I don't really recommend it because uh, there are a lot of uh, instances where I see the, for, especially in the European project sites, because I'm all into it, you see the uh, project logo in the profile picture, you see the project logo in the cover photo, and then you see the project logo on every post. So it's kind of over, over branding and it's kind of sending me the wrong signals. I, I, I don't wanna see the logo 
in seven different places at the same screen. So I, I don't, I don't practice this. I don't, I don't put the logo in every, but if you want to do this, this is the place where you would go and upload media, upload your own images, your logos, your background, whatever you would like. The next step is photos and all of the photos shown here, you can use, they're all uh, uh, license free. So you don't have to attribute anyone. You don't have to uh, worry about creative commons. One thing to, uh, to pay attention here uh, is to, uh, when you just hover your mouse over the photo, you will see in the, uh, in the down right corner, it says free. So if the image has the free sticker on it, it's free. It's for the free version of Canva. But every now and then, I don't know if I'm gonna find any right now, but every now and then you will get some that has a, a little crown here instead of the free uh, sticker, which means it's the pro version. The crown like the one that you see here on the resize button, because the resize op yeah. option is also just only available in the pro version. Okay. And then the next step is elements where you can find stickers, um, any kind of lines, shapes, frames, stuff like that. You can also search for the specific thing you, you, you need. We'll get back to that a little bit later. The next step is text, adding text. You can automatically a add a heading, a subheading, uh, or a little bit of a body text as it says, uh, but also you can use text templates here. So if I, for example, really like this text, um, um, configuration here, I can just use it and then change the text in it, or I can change it completely. So everything in Canva is completely uh, adjustable and you can personalize everything. So you can customize the color, for example, if you choose yeah, that one. Yeah, okay. everything, whatever you okay. want. But also you can al also start from a just blind okay. um, text box. The next thing is adding audio, which is a pretty much new feature. You can also see that a bunch of it here is only for the pro version, but you have some free sounds. And this is the tab that allows you, for example, create, to create, I don't know, Instagram stories, maybe Facebook stories with the added sounds, sound effects. You can also, of course, prepare graphics uh, or animations with the, with the sound, but uh, for a just regular Facebook post, this is not needed. The same goes for videos. So you can also find uh, for example, 50 second free uh, stock videos that maybe you can use for, I don't know, animating your uh, cover photo or just animating your average post because on Facebook and uh, animated posts uh, get a better reach than just the static ones. The next step is background, which is just, as it says, just changes the whole background of the uh, of your graphic you can change it you don't have to you can leave it white you can you can also change it in other ways you will see later on but you can also at any point you can just go to the background tab and change the background of your design the next step is folders uh, for the free version you only have the purchased and the likes folders so i can like any any designs that i like that i find amusing and then i can they automatically save in the uh, likes folder, but if I want to create new folders, I actually have to subscribe to the professional version of Canva. Folders are great for uh, when you're uh, collaborating with a lot of people on the same design or on, the, on a lot of projects. So I can have one folder for, I don't know, my public makers project and I can share it with all my colleagues and I can have one personal, I can have one for business and, and so on. And then the tab that's just the three dots, the more tab is just some additional uh, uh, different sites that are connected to Canva. So I can directly post from Canva to Facebook, for example, or to Instagram if I want, but I, I actually never use this. I always download, download it and then post it in my own regular way. Also, I have Pexels here. I don't know if you heard for Pexels, but it's a, a it's a free stock photo uh, service that allows you to find a lot of really nice photography 
uh, for free and you can directly access it from here but also you don't have to because also the photos that you find under the tabs for under the tab photos some of these photos are directly uh, pulled from the pixels web page so just a little side side note okay so i'm gonna start designing my uh facebook post now i'm gonna make a facebook post about data visualization and how it affects our brain. And I'm just gonna make a small post about, it's gonna be one of, one of those, did you know that uh, posts? And then it's gonna have some, maybe a chart or two and some additional visual elements. So for start, I want to, I want to create the title. So I'm gonna go to the text. If I like anything here, I can simply use it. Maybe I will use it for now for the title, but later on, I will show you how to use the uh, blind text boxes. So maybe I like this one. So I just clicked on it and it appeared on my, uh, on my canvas. I can also either drag and drop it somewhere I want or just click on it, whatever, it's, it's the same. And now I can just click and drag it wherever I want. You will notice as I drag it around, some pink lines, magenta lines appear. Those are the alignment lines. So if I want to have it really centered, it kind of snaps to the center when I hover with my mouse over it. Or if I want to go in the top left corner, when I'm up there, the mm -hmm. margins show and I can use them to just kind of make better layout for my overall, um, overall design. Okay, so definitely I want a bit wider box. I'm, I wanna use this font because I like it and I'm gonna use it to, uh, to write the text. Did you know that dot, dot, dot. I'm just gonna select it just like you would do it in Word or anywhere. And I'm just gonna make it a bit smaller so that it fit, fits in one, in one row. Okay, and I'm going to drag it a bit up again. Okay, for now, I don't think I need the other, uh, the other text uh, box. So I'm just going to either delete the text and leave it for later, or I can also just select the text box and also click. Oh, um, I'm on my, I'm on my laptop and I don't know where the delete button is here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't expect this. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to leave it for now, but you can also just click on the text box and delete it with the delete tab uh, button on your on your keyboard. So I will uh, leave the coloring of the font for later. For now, I just want to do the layout and then I'm going to play a bit with the colors. So did you know that and I have this information, which I really like here that says 90% of information transmitted to the brain is visual. So I think this is a fun uh, fact that I want to share on my Facebook page. And I'm going to go in the elements tab and just scroll a bit down until I get to the charts part. And here I want to use a chart, a, maybe a pie chart for this. And I'm going to go to see all. And then um, I have all these different kinds of charts. Uh, and of course, you, you're going to pick the one that, that you find best suited for your the piece of information that you want to share. But since I just have this 90% uh, that I want to visualize, maybe it's even fun to not do the pie chart uh, and, or the donut chart is actually this is how this is called. I'm going to use the kind of gear, uh, gear chart. I don't know how I would call it. Mm -hmm. And I clicked on it. It appears on my canvas and then I can enter the percentage and the percentage is 90%. And also I can edit the line weight, which is just the, the thickness uh -huh. of the line. So I, yeah, whatever I want. But you notice that uh, the, the gear thingy shifted to 90, 90%. Okay, actually now that I put it in, I don't really like it. So I'm just gonna, Usually I would just click on it and then click on delete. I don't know where delete is here. So I'm just gonna right click and click on delete. I'm, I'm gonna go back to the pie chart. I think it looks better. And 
enter the percentage of 90%. Line weight may be a bit thinner. And also I can either round the endpoints or keep them sharp depending on the style you wanna, you wanna use. Also, I can, um, I can include the percent, percentage label mm -hmm. in the middle if I want, or I don't have to, it's whatever you want. I, I think I don't want to because I wanna use the middle of it to enter, the, to enter my, own, uh, my own text there, which is gonna be the, the end of the sentence about the 90%. 90 so I'm gonna go to text now. I'm gonna go to add a subheading, for example, whatever. And I'm gonna write the information that I just told you. So 90% of information transmitted to the brain is visual. I'm just gonna write is visual. And then I'm gonna make it a bit smaller. I wanted the, the textbooks to be a bit more narrow. Maybe I can change the font at this point. You can see some of the fonts are mm -hmm. only for the pro version. I think I will like maybe, <laughs> I want a uh, nice clean, oh, maybe this, just nice clean sans serif font without the, uh, any embellishments. And maybe I'm gonna do 90% in bold. And I can drag it over and put it in the middle of my, of my design here. Okay, so this is the first piece of information I have. Then also maybe I wanna say that uh, captioned text gets read four times more than body copy. So the text that uh, when we read a text uh, or a pamphlet or whatever, and when, where there's, when there's a part of the text that's captioned, it gets read four times more than the rest of the text, the body, the body text. So this is maybe a fun information I, I can include here. Now that I have the, uh, the previous um, text box that I already designed with the, uh, with the font that I like, I can also just right click it copy and then right click again and paste uh, to avoid creating new text box and finding the same font and stuff like that. Design wise, I wouldn't suggest using more than two fonts in the same document. So one for the heading font and maybe other one for, uh, for the body, uh, body font. Generally, yeah. Generally, how I like to use it is I use a serif font for the heading font. I, mm -hmm. like, I like the little small embellishments at the ends. And then for the main text, I always use a sans serif font because I find it uh, easier to read and a bit more, a bit less um, complicated. So it, it fits better to the visuals that I'm introducing also to the graphic. I have a question design wise. I would have started with the background and you're starting with the elements. So then at the end, you match the background to the elements and not otherwise. Yeah, well, usually for this type of posts, I don't even use a background. I always use just white and then okay. I add color I in a different way. But of course you can, you, you can do it like that. But design wise, again, uh, I'm also uh, primarily, I'm a corporate design designer. So I mostly do um, logos. And this is the kind of way, this is my process always. I always start with black and white. And then if it looks good, adding uh, visuals colors. and colors is never the problem. You just play with it. But if you already start with a strong color, in the beginning, it kind of directs you to a, to a narrow point where you can only go and kind of narrows your design. So, so caption text gets read four times more than body text. So this is maybe a fun information. I'm gonna just make it a bit smaller for now. 
and I'm gonna leave it somewhere here. Maybe I'm either gonna try to find an element that's uh, caption was gonna come out. Okay. Hmm. No, I want to find the caption signs. So I'm actually just gonna use another text box and I'm gonna write them myself and find some font that really makes it look nice. I think another serif font would look nice here as a visual element. Maybe this, ah, no, disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> I want the really, really nice ones. Maybe, no. This is always the, the part that takes away the, the most time when designing, cho choosing a font. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna find some, no. <laughs> I wanted to say I'm gonna take anything, but. <laughs> but no, you won't. Yeah, I really have a vision in my mind that I want. <laughs> Please be a nice caption sign. Delina maybe, mm, ugly. Okay, I'm just gonna pick this for now and we'll see where it takes us. Okay, I'm gonna make it a large, larger because I wanna use it as a, oh, maybe I can actually go with this and then go like this and also copy the whole thing and paste it again and do it, do the same thing at the end. So kind of caption this piece of information, maybe something like that. Okay, this looks better. When you have more elements that all together create one element of your graphic, like for example, here I have these captions, then these captions, then this text box, I can select all three of them, right click and group. So at this point, they all act like one element and I can still edit them, every, every piece of them separately, but I can also uh, just move them all together as one, one element. I think I'm, I'm gonna do the same also here because I have two elements here. Or no, for some reason I don't have the group uh, button here, but maybe it's because it's only two elements. So, okay, for now I'm gonna leave it like that. And then also maybe just, no, I'm not gonna do any more because we are kind of running out of time. So for now, I'm just gonna leave it like this. So I have three basic elements here that I wanna, uh, I wanna show in my graphics. So I have the title, I have the small donut chart, and then I have the small visual here with the, with the captions. So these are the three elements, my, my three main elements that I'm dealing with. And I'm just gonna try and kind of make a better layout here. Maybe just drag it down a bit. Maybe I can make this a bit larger now since I don't have any others, any other el visual elements that I wanna use. When you wanna drag, drag something just a bit left or right, you can also use the arrow keys. So it makes it more precise. And I think I wanna make this centered and also now that I have more more space I think I'm gonna make it a bit bigger so that's it so it's gonna drag it a bit down same goes with this okay okay so this is the main, main layout actually I'm as a designer I'm currently in a really black and white phase so <laughs> So I really like the look of it, just black text on, on white, but I'm gonna add some color. Uh, naturally, I already have the blue one here because that's the template that I chose, but I can, I can change it in a, any color I want. I'm also gonna use an element, maybe uh, I'm gonna use just the square here. And I'm gonna, use it as a background piece just for the title. Somewhere like this. 
And then you notice that I covered my text completely with it, but I can right click and then send to back so that I, I can create, um, I can see my text again. Now that um, I've added this, uh, okay, What's, what else could I add from the elements? Maybe some eye icons. We're gonna see what comes up. So I'm thinking in terms, I'm making a small Facebook infographic post about data visualization and how our brains and eyes perceive the information. So maybe an eye icon could be nice here, but I'm looking for something really, really simple, which something like this, but it's a pro thing. So I'm probably not gonna use it. I don't know, maybe this one is gonna look okay. Okay, this is gonna be maybe an element. I'm still thinking about it, but maybe I can use it somewhere. Okay, so now how to change the colors. I have the text, uh, the, the square behind, I can just click on it. Then I have the small uh, color, uh, color button here, and I can either choose any of the colors here, or I can add a new color and drag the, the cursor anywhere. I can also use the hexa, uh, um, hexa code of the color if I know it already in advance. Let's say I wanna use this yellow one for, for the heading. And then maybe I wanna use a purple one for the, for the elements. So purple one here and the purple one there. Okay. Okay, I'm not done. I wouldn't pose this yet. I will probably change also the, maybe the, I would play with the, with the header a bit. Maybe it's too, oh, kind of works. Maybe it's too, too bright, but we are running out of time. So I'm gonna just speed it up a bit. Uh, I'd probably, I wouldn't use the icon uh, of the eye like this yet. Maybe we, sh we should think about it, but again, we are running out of time. So, so I'm, I'm thinking about it, <laughs> doing as fast as I can. So, okay, let's say we are finished uh, and we wanna post this to Facebook. So the next step would be to download this also, just one small thing I want to show you before we end. When you're done, when you're completely done, there's always this one uh, fun thing at the end that you can do, and it's to click animate here and see how you can quickly animate your graphic. So even a static graphic that you intended as, as a static graphic, you can create a small video with it and make it a bit more fun for, for your Facebook or Instagram page or story or whatever. So there are a different, only the first five ones are free. The next five ones are uh, no. pro, but you can use and create a quick little animation. I, I only use the first one. I really like the block one because it kind of makes it really clean and nice. So, and you can pick how, how long does it last. So maybe I want it to last 12 and a half seconds. And then it looks, uh, then the video is gonna last for 20 and a half seconds. So it's not just gonna be a three second video, but it's gonna be a longer one. So uh, if you're doing an Instagram or Facebook post, the 15 second is the mark that fits in one story, a story, sorry, not post. So you would maybe do a 50, 15 second one. Okay, but I'm not gonna use uh, animation. So I just clicked again on the animation one and click. Uh, um, and I'm gonna click uh, the none, no animation. Okay. And I'm just gonna download it. So I have the, uh, the button uh, up upright and it's suggested to download it as PNG. I can also do a JPEG, PDF if I want MP4 video, if it was animated. And I would click download, preparing your design and it's ready to download. And that's it. There are no watermarks. Canva didn't add any watermarks okay. to the final design, which is something that I really love. And uh, that's it. It's, let's say it's ready to, 
uh, to post to your Facebook post. page. Nice. Yeah. So, so this they is, don't have watermarks yeah. even if it's not the pro. Yeah, you, they don't have. Actually, if you used, you could. They have the thing that you can use any of the pro, uh, for example, any of the pro pictures. You can use them in your design. But if you use the pro features without paying for the pro version, when you download it, those features have the watermark. Understood. So those elements would have the watermark. But anything else is is fine. I understand. Thank you. Very useful, really. Um, I... Thank you, Victoria. Good. Thank you. Uh, Me. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very <laughs> much. It was, it was really very, very useful. And very yeah. quick and just nice overview of the um, program. Thank you. I, as I said, it's really, really easy to, um, to use. You don't have to worry about saving. It saves automatically every, every like second. So you can't, you can't lose any of your designs. And when you, um, when you enter your Canva profile from any device, you find all your designs there. And also okay. there's the feature to share the design with someone. So when I share my design, for example, with Victoria, she can open it in her Canva and continue working on it, which is something. Oh, that's, that's really great. Yeah. 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 As I said, the thing how I use it mo mostly is for the EU projects when we had to translate some graphics for in every national language of the project partners. And it's easier, even though I like to use Photoshop and Illustrator for my own uh, designs, but when I have to share it with other organizations that mostly don't have uh, Photoshop and uh, Illustrator licenses or people who know how to use them, Canva is a really, really good second op option. That's great. Yeah, I see. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have to run because I have a meeting now. So I'm going to go. Thank nice you. to see you, Sanyan. Thank you very much and Thank have a good day. Bye -bye. It was really nice hearing you. you also. You can stop the recording. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>